Grazie. Pleasure to call Jim Higgins, the former Vice President of the EEP at the European Parliament. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, former colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, friends of free Iran, well done. This is a marvelous occasion, and your organization deserves all the plaudits it gets, because you have done a fantastic job. And it was so riveting and inspiring to hear our colleagues from Moldova and our also besieged colleagues from Ukraine spell out in detail exactly the importance of what's going on at present and how we fight repression. Because if ever a war wants to be won, this one has to be won. Because the consequences of it not being won are just unthinkable. But it is a war that will be won. And it's a war that will enable Moldova and Ukraine, and a lot of those other states which are under threat from imperialist Russia to rightly take their place among the nations of the earth and among the European Union. We look forward to that day, and that day is going to happen. And the consequences of the victory for Ukraine are manifold. First of all, democracy and freedom, freedom from subrogation, but also from the point of view of driving an arrow right into the heart of the Iranian regime, who are supplying the kamikaze drones that daily attack Kyiv, irrespective of the manifest attempts to thwart them and take them out. Every single day we hear more and more casualties, civilian casualties, Nothing is sacred. Hospitals, schools, apartments. So this is going to be a major blow. That war, the winning of that war, is going to be a major blow to Iran and to the regime. I have been a supporter since I was a member of the European Parliament first in 2004. And I want to say now that I'm speaking to the people of Camp Ashraf. Because I've been there with you, Ashraf won. Ashraf II, so-called Camp Liberty, and Ashraf III. And well done, Albania, for hosting them. Because I know that you still are not safe, but at the same time, you are guaranteed protection, international protection. And we saw earlier the very, very inspiring revolution that's now happening on the streets. People power, that's what it's all about. People power, the power of the people, and the people's power will eventually prevail. It might be strong, it might be like a boulder up a hill, but it will eventually happen. And people power is what's going to win the day. And we saw in Ashraf 1 what happened when Ashraf 1 and the people in Ashraf 1 were allowed to be set upon by the barbarians in Iraq, so-called protectors of Ashraf 1, where they allowed free reign to people to carry out a savage bombardment week in, week out, and we saw the casualty list. And it was even more graphic than what you've seen on the streets of Tehran and the cities. There's a saying that was coined by the first woman president we had in Ireland, Mary Robinson, a great advocate of human rights, a person who was very involved in the anti-apartheid movement. And the evening that she was elected president of Ireland, she coined the phrase, she said, the hand that rules the world rocks the cradle. And that's why having Mrs. Miriam Rajavi in situ with a 10-point blueprint, that is what's going to deliver Iran from the hands and the tyranny of the mullah and give Iran back to the people. Can I say that from the point of view... From the point of view of appeasement, and we've heard a lot about appeasement, I don't understand appeasement. 
To be honest with you, I don't understand why we have embassies. I don't know why we have embassies. They should be the same as has happened with Russia. They should be seen as pariahs and they should be isolated on the world stage. I know any time there's an embassy opened, it's all for economic considerations. The economy is very important. Our individual economies are very important. What's hugely more important than any scale of priorities is human rights. And I honestly believe from the point of view of sending a clear message to them that the embassies just as happened in relation to the withdrawal from Russia, the embassies should all be closed down, isolate them, and we can all open them up again as soon as Mrs. Rajavi is given the opportunity of delivering her blueprint. Can I say in conclusion, well done. But look, if it's to happen, and it will happen, we can pass resolutions and motions at European level, at parliamentary level, at local authority level, you name it, we can pass all the resolutions with all the goodwill and intentions of the world. Resolutions are one thing, it's all about actions. But if the regime is going to be tackled, it's not going to be our actions on the outside because there's going to be no invasion. It has to happen within. And that's why the uprising that's ongoing, which we hear intermittently, the momentum has to be kept going. The pressure has to be kept on. The people have got to win this. And at the end of the day, we're going to be back here, hopefully, because I've been here year in, year out, here, you name it, different venues, London and so on. But at the end of the day, it's the people and the people's will and the people's power and the people's uprising. That's when God's going to deliver freedom for the people of Iran and allow them to unleash, as has been said by several speakers here, that huge economic potential that's there. Country of its size, huge riches. Allow it to be unleashed for the betterment and the will of the people. Thank you very much indeed and well done.